What I want to do in this video is to derive an expression for density of states uh, in a semiconductor. And in this video, I'm interested in the case where I have a 3D semiconductor. So I have the semiconductor slab and it's three dimensional in uh, nature. And uh, let's say it has a length of uh, LX in this uh, X direction. And what I'm interested in deriving is this density of states uh, or density of uh, states of electrons and holes, which is possible in this 3D slab of semiconductor. And since I, I like uh, abbreviating things, I can abbreviate this uh, density of state as uh, DOS. And I want to derive this density of state as a function of uh, energy. And uh, this, uh, uh, keep in mind that this has no correlationship with DOS or the uh, operating system uh, popularized by Microsoft uh, in uh, the 90s. So what I'm interested in is this stand, DOS stands for density of states uh, uh, for a semiconductor. And in this video, I'm interested in density of state for a three dimensional semiconductor. So this density of state, it would have a unit of essentially it, it, it's, uh, density of states so or number of states per unit of uh, energy and then uh, in in a given volume so it has a, a unit of uh, energy per unit energy per unit uh, volume so in the case of a three dimensional semiconductor this would translate to this would be essentially having a, a unit of uh, per ev and uh, per centimeter cube so this would be my density of state uh, uh, in the case of a three dimensional uh, semiconductor. So let's start with, you know, some basics. So if I have a, if I have this slab with uh, a length uh, LX in the X direction, I know my wave function in that particular uh, direction would have this uh, generic uh, form where it's a superimposition of, uh, let's say a sine function and a cosine uh, function. And, uh, uh, we have these constants a and b and you know they their their values are determined based on the boundary conditions and one of the boundary conditions we have is that the wave function when you approach the edge of the slab so if you approach uh, the edge of the slab this wave function has to go to zero so you know let's say if you have a wave like this at the edge it has to go to the zero so what it is imposes is that our k this what it imposes is that this uh, kl should be an integral multiple of uh, pi such that you know this this wave function uh, goes to zero at the edges and uh, so what we get is our, the value of uh, k's which are possible they are of this form where they are you know integral multiple of uh, pi over l where you know m could be anything between zero one and uh, so on so these what we see is that if we look in the k space if we look uh, now you know translate over and uh, use this relationship and we translate to a k space what we see is that in our k space let's say i have this k space and i have a kx ky and uh, kz what i what i what i see is that uh, each of these states now is essentially you know each of these k values it, it can only uh, occur in uh, these discrete uh, states so each of my states in my k space is essentially i can represent it by this cube where each of my states in the k space it occupies this cube which has uh, this uh, dimension so each of these uh, each of these uh, key states has a volume in the k space which is you know equivalent to pi over lx into pi over ly and into pi over lz and just to simplify things i'll assume that you know my my band structure is, is essentially isotropic or my slab is essentially it's it's similar in uh, in all dimension so then in that case each of these uh, states occupies a volume of uh, pi over l cube in the k space so now how many states do i have in let's say a given volume in this uh, k space so let's say i have i have you know i have this uh, spear in the k space so you know i have this spear and uh, i want to find out how many states do i have in this uh, given volume uh, in the k space so the number of states i have uh, in this uh, in this volume is essentially the volume i have so the volume i have is uh, i have one eighth of a spear drawn over here so i can say it's uh, one eighth 
or into the volume of this uh, sphere and you know I can be generic and light it down as this volume as 4 pi of this radius of the sphere and you know I can write it down as kx, ky, kz and uh, so this is the volume I have and then the number of states I have is essentially this total volume divided by this volume that each space, uh, each state uh, takes up uh, in this case space. So I divide it by this volume and that essentially gives me uh, this uh, formula. And I also need to multiply this number by 2 because uh, each of these uh, states could be occupied by a spin up or a spin down electron. So the total number of uh, uh, total number of uh, electrons or holes I can have uh, in these uh, in this uh, volume in the k space is essentially needs to be multiplied by two as well. And I could go over here and you know I could assume that my semiconductor is essentially it's uh, isotropic again uh, in this uh, k space. And then I can I can uh, I can write this uh, relationship as essentially it's uh, you know it's a pi times k cube divide by 3 into L by pi cube. So this tells me how many number of uh, you know electrons I can occupy in this uh, K space. But you know I started this video I said that you know I want to find out the density of states in uh, so I want to find out the density of states per unit of energy and per unit of volume. So why am I fooling around in the K space when you know I want to really find out the density of states uh, of uh, of uh, of electrons so I want to find out how many states are possible per unit of energy so the relationship i am really interested uh, in deriving is the total number of states i have as per unit uh, energy so the relation i am really interested in deriving is this and my density of state is uh, equivalent to essentially the number of state i have per unit uh, energy divided by the total volume and I know the total volume if I had a slab which has dimension uh, a cube which has dimension L uh, would be you know L cube so this would be my density of state. Now what I can do is you know I could be clever about how I derive this uh, number of states uh, per unit energy and what I'll do is I'll say that you know instead of derive instead of taking this derivative with respect to energy I'll use chain rule and what I'll say is that e this is equivalent to deriving a derivative uh, of the total number of state with respect to k and then taking a derivative of k with respect to e. So this is you know I'll, how I'll I try to use this relationship. So I already know my number of states uh, in as a function of k and I can take a derivative of that. So I'll use that and substitute uh, it over here and what it essentially translates to so this will reduce to you know 1 over l cube multiplied by pi k square into l by pi cube right so if i take a derivative of this i get 3 k square and i substitute this over here and uh, so this is you know what it all uh, boils down to so, what so let me rearrange this stuff and what I get is I finally get k square by pi square into dk by de. So as long as I can find out this value of dk by de then you know I'm a made man. I have found my density of states and you know I can die happily ever after. So and, and looking at it you know this 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 looks like I've you know this looks like something I've seen earlier so probably I already know how to calculate this uh, dk by uh, de so it turns out you know we, we derive this uh, we derive this uh, ek relationship so you know we figured out that uh, when we have uh, uh, when we have electrons and holes uh, close to the conduction and uh, valence uh, band we can essentially you know write their energy in for in, uh, in in this uh, in and represent it as a form of k in this ek relationship where you know energy of this electron in the conduction or uh, or this hole in the valence band could be just expressed as uh, similar to the way you extract the energy of a free particle where you say it's h square k square by 2m where m in this case you know is, is given by this uh, 
by this band instead of this being a free electron mass and you know I could be more generic and I could split it down and write it in terms of kx, ky and uh, kz but from, from this relationship I can take a derivative of this and I get uh, de by dk is equal to you know h square k by m or my dk by de is equal to you know m by uh, h square uh, k and uh, further I can using this relationship I can uh, I can write down k in terms of uh, e as well so so now you know it looks like you know I'm, I'm, I'm getting somewhere so what I can do now is you know I can I can substitute uh, dk by de into this relationship and it gives me uh, this relationship and then you know I further want instead of k I want to represent uh, this in terms of uh, energy so I, uh, I substitute for k over here and what I get is you know this final relationship and uh, what I get is, is, is I in terms of uh, functional relationship I get my density of states which is uh, proportional to this uh, m star and uh, it's uh, proportional to the square root of uh, energy and this is you know this is quite a quite a you know quite an interesting relationship so it says uh, it's proportional to this mass and sometimes I call this mass as my density of uh, uh, density of uh, state uh, mass and it's proportional to this energy and you know I can further write this energy in terms of uh, in terms of reference uh, of the conduction band so this is a you know this is an interesting relationship and uh, and uh, what I've done in this case is I've derived it uh, for the case uh, of uh, for the case of uh, isotropic uh, band so what I've done you know is, is essentially I've derived uh, uh, I've derived this uh, relationship uh, for uh, for uh, for this case where you know my bands were uh, my bands were uh, you know they were isotropic uh, in all directions so you know this uh, uh, this uh, uh, this equi energy surface of my band was essentially like a sphere and you know I can I can further uh, go and derive this uh, relationship uh, for this uh, ellipsoid as well over here essentially my energy instead of uh, just being h square k square by 2m I, I can split it down into individual components and so you know I, I'll write it uh, this way plus you know a component in y and so on and you know then I can use back my analysis and I can derive this uh, density of state again and you know it turns out that it, it, it comes out to be of, uh, of this form where essentially of instead of using this uh, density of state mass I take these individual mass which is you know these uh, individual uh, mass in x y and z direction and but my density of state relationship it uh, remains otherwise similar in nature so instead of taking this uh, uh, third power of density of state and dividing it by two I, I get this individual masses in uh, in the x y and z direction and further you know further I, I might have instead of just having one of these uh, bands I could have you know uh, bands which are degenerate so for example this is showing a case where uh, for an electron you have eight of these uh, equivalent bands uh, in your uh, one, one, uh, one, one, one direction so this then this density of skin you know be further multiplied by this uh, degeneracy factor and in this case this this is equal to eight and then I get my equivalent uh, density of state but nonetheless you know otherwise in in terms of uh, functional uh, functional in terms of you know functional dependence this relationship says that my uh, density of state for a 3D semiconductor is, is essentially proportional to the square root uh, of uh, energy 